الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد So today inshallah ta'ala we're going to talk about a very important topic and this topic is vital to maintain a balanced attitude to life, to attain happiness. And in reality, brothers and sisters, that is why the believer never gives up. That is why the believer never despairs, regardless of what challenges they face in life. And the verse that we are going to discuss today for this lesson where we are going to talk about 30 themes from 30 verses from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant us strength to complete it. Because there's no tawfiq, there's no success except with Allah azza wa jal. It is a verse in Surah At-Tawbah. Surah At-Tawbah verse number 51. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, قُلْ لَنْ يُسِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا هُوَ مَوْلَانَا وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Say, O Muhammad, say to them, nothing afflicts us except that Allah has written it for us. He is our protector, our helper. And let the believers place their trust solely in Allah. This is something, brothers and sisters, that should be memorized by every single one of us. لَنْ يُسِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا هُوَ مَوْلَانَا وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ This is something that should be memorized by the young and the old. The men and the women. Because in life, in life you will have good times. And everyone can deal with the good times. But the believer, alhamdulillah, has the correct attitude. The believer has the correct attitude at good times and bad times. At good times, as the Prophet وسلم, he told us in the authentic hadith in Sahih Muslim, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ Amazing is the affair of the believer. إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ خَيْرٌ His complete affair is good. عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ Amazing is the affair of the believer. Look, the believer. نعم, and depending upon the strength of your faith, that will determine how much you will experience from this. إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ خَيْرٌ His entire affair or her entire affair is good. إِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ سَرَّاءُ شَكَرٌ If they are blessed, if they receive good, they are thankful. نعم. They are thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and because of their gratitude, Allah azza wa jal bestows upon them further blessings and allows them to enjoy the blessings that they have in opposition to the person that receives blessings but is arrogant and never satisfied. That person will never be content regardless of what they attain from this world and they will never be at ease because they will always fear that they are going to lose what they have or they fear somebody's going to take it from them, they're never satisfied in opposition to the believer. The believer, when they are blessed by Allah Azza wa Jal, they show thanks to Allah Azza wa Jal, and they enjoy those blessings even more. And they utilize them in things that are going to benefit them in this world, and in the akhirah and the hereafter. 
And the Prophet sallallahu he said, فَكَانَ خَيْرَ اللَّهِ This is good for the believer. This is good for them. وَإِنْ أَصَابَتُ ذَرَّاءُ صَبَرُ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتُ ذَرَّاءُ صَبَرُ And if the believer is afflicted with calamity, they are patient. فَكَانَ خَيْرًا له. And this is better for them. وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدْ إِلَّا الْمُؤْمِنِ This is for no one except for the believer. Allahu Akbar. Brothers and sisters, this is important in a time where mental illness and psychological illness is on the increase and the rise and it's becoming prevalent. Yes, yeah, some people may be trialed with these things and it's like any other illness. And they have to be patient and deal with it the best way they can. Exhausting the legislated means, the permissible means. However, sometimes people exacerbate these type of conditions within themselves because of their activities and their behavior and their attitude towards life. And that is why Shaykh al-Islam al-Mujaddid Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullah in his book Al-Qawad al-Arba' As'alullah al-Kareem رب العرش العظيم أن يتولاك في الدنيا والآخرة وأن يجعلك ممن إذا أعطي شكر وإذا ابتلي صبر وإذا أذنب استغفر فإن هؤلاء الثلاث عنوان السعادة فإن هؤلاء الثلاث عنوان السعادة He said I ask Allah the most generous the Lord of the Magnificent Throne to protect you in this world and the next and to make you from those if they are given, if they are blessed they are thankful and if they are trialed and tested they are patient and if they sin, they repent and we spoke about that on what day? who can remind me? what day did we speak about seeking Allah's forgiveness? Again, I, I advise all of you, the brothers and the sisters, go away and go over these verses. These verses are muhim for the life of the Muslim, for our entire life. It's not just that we sit here today and we forget about what we've heard. No, we go over it and we try and repeat it and we try and share it. <clears throat> now, we spoke about seeking forgiveness. Look how all of this is connected. And at the end he said, فَإِنَّ هَوْلَى الثَّلَاثِ These three things, عُنْوَانَ السَّعَادَةِ They are the integral or the vital components of happiness. These three things. Now, and look at this verse, brothers and sisters. If we were to analyze this verse closely, there would not be a calamity in our life except by the will of Allah we would be able to get over it. Not like those people, when they are trialed and tested in life, they jump on a bridge, they get on a bridge and they're looking to jump off the bridge. Not like those people that if they're tested with a calamity, they're looking to jump out of the window or take their life through an overdose. Other than that, why? Because the believer has faith in the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal. لَنْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا Nothing will afflict us except Allah has written it for us in the preserved tablet. مَا أَصَابَكْ لَمْ يَكُنْ لِيُخْتِئَكْ What befalls you, you are certain that it was never going to miss you. وَمَا أَخْطَأَكَ لَمْ يَكُنْ لِيُصِيبَكَ And what missed you was never going to hit you. <coughs> that belief has to be firm in the heart. And when it's firm in the heart, you will see that the person is balanced in their attitude in life. They are able to cope and maneuver at good times, which is easy for us all, and at bad times, when it's difficult. They can maneuver and their personality 
is balanced. They can maneuver through the challenges and the difficulties of life because there's going to be difficulties. There are ups and there are downs. But never despair, no matter what. Never give up, no matter what. The believer never gives up, ever. Even if all of the cards are stacked against him, the believer never gives up. لَنْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا Nothing will afflict us except that Allah has written it for us in the preserved tablet. And we have to be patient with that. And if you are patient with that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you ease and he will give you a way out. وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَ وَيَرْزُقُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ وَمَن يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ Whoever fears Allah, Allah will give them a way out and provide for them from avenues that they cannot imagine. And whoever places their trust in Allah, Allah is sufficient for them. Al-Imam al-Shawkani rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned an explanation of this verse. He said, وَفَائِدَةُ هَذَا الْجَوَابِ The benefit of this answer, this statement, brothers and sisters, لَنْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا Nothing will afflict us except that Allah has written except that Allah has written it for us. Nothing will afflict us except that Allah has written it for us. هُوَ مَوْلَانَا He is our protector, our helper. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ And let the believers place their trust solely in Allah. Shukani said the benefit of this. أَنَّ الْإِنسَانِ ذَا عَلِمَ أَنَّ مَا قَدَّرَهُ اللَّهُ كَائِنَ if a person knows whether male or female, what Allah decreed for them is going to happen, is going to occur regardless of what they want or what they like. And if a person knows that everything that affects them from good or evil. It is due to the qadr, the decree and divine preordainment of Allah, then every calamity that afflicts this person, this believer, it will be tolerable. They will be able to get over it. They will be able to handle it. Now, you will be able to handle it. Not saying that you, you might not be sad. Yes, you may be sad, if a person loses a child, they may cry. There's nothing wrong with that. The prohibition is wailing. The heart feels sorrow. The eyes shed tears. But we do not say except that which is pleasing to our Lord. So yes, a person may be sad, but you will be able to get over it. Why? Because you are certain that everything that occurs in life is by the decree and divine preordainment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And look, brothers and sisters, the supplication, the supplication to remove depression, anxiety, grief, nam, a very important part of that involves the belief in the divine decree. A person says, the Prophet wasallam taught us, Allahumma inni abduk, wabnu abdik, wabnu amatik, nasiyati biyadik, maadin fiya hukmuk, adlun fiya qadauk. The servant says, Oh Allah, I am your servant, the son of your servant, the son of your female servant. My forelock is in your hand. Your judgment concerning me is already determined. Your decree concerning me is just. Look, the belief in the divine decree in order to remove anxiety, depression and grief. Belief in the divine decree, one of the pillars of, it, of Iman. One of the pillars of faith. I ask you by every name that belongs to you. That you revealed in your book. Or you taught 
some of your creation or you kept knowledge of this name hidden in the unseen with you I ask you to make the Quran the spring of my heart and the light of my chest and anyone who says this supplication Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace their sorrow and their grief with happiness. Look, the beginning comprises of a portion that involves belief in the divine decree. لَن يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا Nothing will afflict us except that which Allah decreed for us. Except that which Allah has written for us in the preserved tablet. And then look brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said Huwa Mawlana. He is our protector. He is our helper. Shawkani said, Nasiruna. Allah Azzawajal is the one who gives us victory. Wajailu al-aqibati lana. And the one who gives us ultimate and eventual success. And the one who makes his religion apparent and manifest. Allahu Akbar. Yes, Allah is our protector. Who can tell me the supplication for times of distress from the da'wat al makroob Who can tell me what it is? Fadl. I'm looking for something else. Allahumma rahmataka. Fadl. طيب, I'm looking for Allahumma rahmataka arju. Anyone memorize that? Fadl. Fala takilni ila nafsi tarfata ain. Wa aslihli sha'ni kulla. La ilaha illa ant. Look, the dua for distress. Look how it's all connected. Imagine this. This is imagine this is in the heart from a young age. Imagine this is moist upon the tongue every time you go through a difficult time. Lan yusibana illa ma kataba Allahu lana huwa maulana wa ala Allahi falyatawakkalil mu'minun. Imagine. Nothing will afflict us except that which Allah has written for us. He is our protector. Naam, the supplication to remove distress. Oh Allah, I only hope for your mercy. Do not leave me to myself for the blinking of an eye. Yes, because you need Allah to protect you. All of us need Allah to protect us. Because if we are left alone, that's destruction. May Allah protect us all from that. Regardless of how strong you think you are. Regardless of how intelligent, regardless of how sharp, regardless of how strong, regardless of anything, you are just a servant to Allah and you are weak and you are needy. We can't even see around the corner, let alone what's coming in life. Do not leave me to myself, even for the blinking of an eye. And rectify all of my affairs. Rectify my worldly affairs. Rectify my religious affairs. Rectify all of my affairs. And look, it's Tawheed. is the foundation. La ilaha illa ant. None has the right to be worshipped except you. Tawheed is the foundation. Look how all of this, brothers and sisters, is connected. Look how all of this stuff is connected. لَنْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا هُوَ مَوْلَانَا Nothing will afflict us except that, that which Allah has written for us. He is our protector. He is our helper. He will give us victory regardless of how dark it seems in the tunnel or in life. There's light because Allah, if you hold on to the book and the sunnah, Allah Azzawajal promises success and victory. The outcome is for the pious. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ And the end of the verse, let the believers 
place their trust solely in Allah. At-tawakkul, placing our trust in Allah Azza wa taking the legislative means, and entrusting our affairs to Allah Azza wa Jal. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Tawakkul عِبَادَةٌ قَلْبِيَّةٌ is worship of the heart. It is directed solely to Allah Azza wa Jal. We only place our trust and our absolute reliance and dependence in Allah Azza wa Jal. Because only Allah can benefit us, only Allah can harm us, only Allah Azza wa Jal can give us what we want, and only Allah Azza wa Jal can remove and protect us from difficulty in our lives. That is why I emphasize for all of us. And yes, this can't just be said with the tongue. It can't just be said upon the tongue. Just upon the tongue, it's not going to be a benefit. It has to be said upon the tongue. And likewise, it has to be said present in the heart. It has to be said upon the tongue. And it has to be present and exist in the heart. And we have to act accordingly with our limbs. We say it, we believe it, Alhamdulillah, Yahdikum Allah, Yusbihu Ba'alakum. And we act accordingly with our limbs. لَنْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا هُوَ مَوْلَانَا وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ and remember, brothers and sisters, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallama, he taught Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma a similar message. When Ibn Abbas was young, Ya ghulam, inni u'allimuka kalimat, ihfadi allaha yahfadka, be mindful of Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Ibn Abbas, O oh young boy, be mindful of Allah and Allah will protect you. Be mindful of Allah and you will find him before you. If you seek aid, seek aid from Allah alone. If you ask, ask Allah alone. Know that if the whole of mankind was to gather together to benefit you, they would not be able to benefit you except with something Allah has written for you. And if they were to gather together to harm you, they would not be able to harm you except with something that Allah has written for you. رُفِعَتِ الْأَقْلَى وَجَفَتِ suhuf. The pens have been lifted and the scrolls have dried. Nam, this is important from a young age. A young age, especially because we are reading in the scientific journals that there is a drastic increase in depression and anxiety amongst young teenagers, especially girls. There is a wave, Nam. It is prevalent now, self-harm, where children are cutting themselves, making cuts on their bodies because of maybe some of the challenges and the difficulties of life. It is upon us as parents, it is upon us as educators, it is upon us as people that want good for the whole of mankind, even though some people don't want it for themselves, that we educate the people concerning these things. That we learn it for ourselves and we educate others. That is why, alhamdulillah, in Ramadan, naam, Ramadan is a month of fasting. It is a month of praying. It is a month of learning. It is a month of striving. It is a month of charity. It is a month that, alhamdulillah, yes, likewise, we, we learn our religion so that we can implement it correctly, but also that we can inform others because the world they need this message this is not only for German town masjid alhamdulillah yes the masjid is jam packed walillah alham wal minna online we have thousands listening online whether it's YouTube whether it's Mixler but this is not only for German town this is a message that all of us every attendee that is here in present or those who are listening online likewise people around you people in your circles need this message as well it has to be shared and when we share this message, we will see what we are seeing in these days. Every single day, even before Ramadan, people have been entering into Islam in amazing numbers just here, coming to the Da'wah Center. I think we're over 150 so far. 
Today we've had, I think around five or six people embrace Islam in the Da'wah Center. Yesterday a similar amount, before that 13, before that in the 20s, because people see it. Because it's being conveyed to them, the beauty of Islam. Many people are living life, they're depressed, they're anxious. With Instagram, it's not fulfilling their needs. They see that this is a bubble that could be burst at any time and you have to come to reality. And some people, they try and escape it by using drugs, but that's not going to work or alcohol or other than that. So when people hear the message of Islam, Tawheed, that there is one God, we only worship that one God. God is perfect. He has beautiful names, perfect attributes. He is the all-wise, the all-knowing. He legislated for us laws so that we can live our life in a happy and a tranquil fashion, they're drawn to the religion of Islam. They're drawn to the religion of Islam. So when we sit here and we learn these things, Nam, Lan Yusibana illa ma katab Allahu lana. When the non Muslims hear us saying these things, it intrigues them. And you never know, and I mentioned it before, La tahkiranna shay'an min al ma'roof. Do not look down upon anything that is good. Maybe that one word that you mentioned. You know, some people they're embarrassed to say th things in front of non-Muslims. They're embarrassed to say, insha'Allah, or they're embarrassed to say, masha'Allah, or subhanallah. Non-Muslims, when they see that, they respect it more. What does that mean? Insha'Allah means God willing. Respect. Masha'Allah, what does it mean? What Allah wills will happen. What did you just say? I said, لَنْ يُسِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا Nothing will afflict us except Allah has written it for us. It, in, it might spark in them an interest to learn more, to know more about Islam. Because these things, Ikhwan, are beautiful. And these things, without a shadow of a doubt, are revelation from Allah Azza wa Jal. No human being could have invented these things. This is, this is completeness for the whole of mankind. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all of us. And may Allah Azza wa Jal bless us to continue and strive in this blessed month of Ramadan. The month of Mujahada. Wa subhanaka Allahumma bihamdika shalwan la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk.